guys, thanks for stopping by my channel today as I make April's Soap of the Month Club Soap. I am so excited about this month's club uh, selection for numerous, numerous reasons. One, I am using Rain and Angelica. I get that from the Flaming Candle. I just adore this scent so much. I think it is so good. It's a type I believe, but I've never smelled the original and it behaves really well in soap. So I'm so excited to get to use this for the soap members. The other reason I am excited about this month's soap is the little addition I add to the boxes. I am giving them their sample of the facial resurfacing scrub that I made. You may have seen it a month or two ago, but it is made with bamboo stem powder and charcoal and uh, Dead Sea Mud. I am so excited to get some feedback from my subscribers on this Dead Sea Mud face scrub. So that's the other reason I'm really, really excited about this month. The third reason that I am excited about the Soap of the Month Club for April is I am doing a salt bar or a spa bar. I, I love these bars so much. And I wanted to do something completely different for the girls that are in the club. And this was on my mind to do. And I finally found the perfect scent with the perfect month to do a salt bar. In my lye water, I have aloe juice instead of water. So it's 100% aloe juice uh, in my with my lye. And it is quite cold right now at 73 degrees. But my oils are 142. I'm soaping with my oils pretty hot. They're nowhere near together, but it is almost six o'clock at night and this is a salt bar. So that means I have to cut it tonight. And I really, really, really cannot wait for this to cool off anymore. And my fragrance oil will decelerate trace. So I think I'm gonna be okay. In one of these pictures is going to be Micah's Amour. I'm doing it making waves. I have just a little bit of that left. And I'm also gonna do Micah's and more apple green mica. Instead of kale and clay, because this is a salt bar, I am using sea clay instead. Now the sea clay has a very earthy gray tone to it. So I imagine that will mute all of my colors, but I'm okay with it. It goes with the soap, it goes with the theme. That's good enough for me. My salt, I'm just using plain old sea salt that I get from Walmart. I was gonna do about 50% of my oil weight in salt, which would be about 30 ounces. But I'm a little shy, I only have 27 and a half ounces of salt, but I'm gonna be okay with that too because this is a no stress bar. <laughs> Other than the fact that I gotta get it done so I can get it cut tonight. Pour this in here. I should say the last time I used this fragrance oil, it decelerated and I had lots and lots and lots of time to work with it. But I don't remember what my recipe was back then. So we, I don't know if that's gonna play a role. It is now 112, so it evened out quite nicely. Still a little warm, but I'm still okay. Okay with that. I am gonna go ahead and put my clay in so I just can get that blended in from the get-go. Very earthy, guys. <laughs> Look at that. I didn't know it was going to be that dark. <laughs> Ooh, I do think this lightens up a little bit. So I am still going to try to salvage that. That was maybe a mistake. Let me split it and see what happens. And let's see, that is not quite one and a half liters. This is a little less. That is close to 50-50. I have no idea what's gonna happen with this blue, but we are gonna find out. Well, it actually looks quite pretty, doesn't it?
Let's see what happens with the grain. I have hope now. I'm not putting all of this in here, don't worry. But I am putting a fair amount in here to combat that, that brown color that the clay gave. I was worried, but these look actually quite pretty. I am okay with these colors. This is much more blue than I thought it was gonna be. Okay, let's see. Fragrance oil or salt first? I think I'll do fragrance oil. Goodness, guys, if you need a slow moving fragrance oil that smells so good, Flaming Candle, Rain and Angelica type. It is seriously a slow, great moving, great for swirls. I am a fan of it. All right, there we go. Now it's starting to thicken up. I haven't really thought about my design other than I'm going to Maybe just do a drop swirl in here. glass rod because I cannot leave well enough alone that way and then back around this way which is awkward and then I'll top it top it with the blue and swirl it with some green All right, I have these pink Himalayan salts that I got from Nature Craft Kitch. And that was a gift that they sent me. And I'm just going to randomly put some pink on here. I just think, oops. I guess it's okay if it's a little heavy because you know, it's gonna fall. A lot of it will fall, I should say. But, I don't want it to be that heavy. All right. I don't know if I like the pink Himalayan salts actually on there. I think I probably would have been better suited to just leave it alone, but it's still pretty and I can't wait to cut it. I don't know, 10 o'clock tonight? <laughs> not, not my best time, guys. <laughs> I'll be back, hopefully. It's been two and a half hours, so I am just going to check it and see where we're at. Wearing gloves, guys. This is not soap yet. It's still doing the saponification process. There we go. When you get soap on the inside of your mold, it doesn't always want to come out. It is coming apart quite nicely there's there's a little bit of soap here on the top but otherwise the soap came off the mold fairly easily so I'm going to take it out it's still very warm too
the last time I did this, I, uh, I took it out of the mold a little early, so I'm, I'm being quite cautious that I don't do that again. But it is, it is quite easily coming off the side, so I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get it out of the mold without too much damage. And it fell right out. <laughs> so I think I'm good there. I am absolutely loving the color that this is giving us. I could maybe have uh, cut that a little sooner. Quite hard to cut it. I'm just taking them apart and putting them right back together here. Let's take a quick look. I love the color and the, the swirls are quite nice. It's very warm. It feels good actually. And I do need to make my samples for my uh, soap of the month boxes. I'm just going to set this aside. Hang on. I think I'm going to take another one and try to do make three bars out of this. So that gives me five of these. And for a while I was cutting them long and half this way, but recently I've started cutting them in half this way. And I just think it's a better kind of user experience to have a squat one rather than a tall skinny one. So now I have my 10 samples. I'm going to put this over it. This one is mine. Put that on top. I'm just kind of building it back up a little bit of the base. And for now, I'm just keeping this covered like this until tomorrow. All right, guys, I wanted to really quickly do a demonstration of my salt bar. I have a little uh, breakage there where it's thin, so it breaks pretty easily. But I wanted to do a demonstration on the lather of this. And this, look at that. So I don't know if you've ever tried a salt bar or have ever made a salt bar, but this lather is kind of unheard of when it comes to the salt bars. For me, in my experience, I, I have not had one that is this foamy. Now it's not gonna have the big bubbles, like the really like bubble, like I don't know how to call it, the bubbles. It's not gonna have that just because of all that salt, but look how creamy and lathery this is. And talk about silky. This is incredibly silky in its feel. It's such a lovely lather that you get when you have a salt bar. So I am in love with this and it smells delightful. All right, I'm gonna to try to rinse my hands in this little bowl here. I tried not to use as much water as I could. Okay, we are done with April Soap of the Month. Actually, I am packing these up tonight. <laughs> this is how long it's been since I've made this soap. Uh, can we just take a look at these swirls? I I just think the colors ended up being so pretty. I'm, I'm really quite happy. I was really worried there for a second when I dropped in that sea clay. Whoo, I knew it would, would affect the colors a little bit and I wasn't gonna be too worried about it, but as soon as I started blending that in, <laughs> I think my heart dropped just a little bit. <laughs> but I really am quite happy with the looks of the bars. The, the swirling is pretty. The smell is so perfect for a salt bar. I love this scent so much. There's my label, if you can see it. Somebody asked me how I package my soaps. I designed my label in Canva and then print that out on an online label. 
And then I shrink wrap them with some biofilm I got from the National Shrink Wrap System. So that, this is how I package my bars. Mm, 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 mm. Now, guys, I wanted to share with you a little bit of a story with me and salt bars. I would make salt bars back in the day, even as early as two years ago. I would be very nervous to put this in a loaf mold and have to cut it within two to four to six hours, I, depending on recipe probably. I would, that really made me nervous. So I always did individual molds and then you can just unmold them whenever you want to. It could be days later and it's not gonna hurt the bar to unmold them. And that always made me feel a lot safer in making them, but I also didn't sell them. I did not sell them. And as soon as I went to a regular bar form, then I started selling them and I sell them pretty good now. Looking back, it's really quite interesting how that really kept people from buying those soaps. They did not want that round soap. So if you make salt bars and you're having trouble with them selling and you don't do it in a loaf mold, maybe bite the bullet and give it a try because it's not as scary as you might think it is. And they sell so much better for me. So hopefully they would sell better for you too. I gotta go get these packed up. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Comment if you did. Subscribe if you did. All those things are awesome. And I'll see you next week. Bye.